ongoing series of It's Great to Be Alive programs, I've talked with many people about their very personal stories, their battles with alcoholism. Alcoholism is an illness that affects more than 10 million Americans, men, women, the young and the old, the successful and the ordinary. Today, we find more and more that successful, well-known people are ready to step forward and publicly say, I'm an alcoholic. I want you to hear my story. Perhaps my story will help you. One of these people is known to millions as John Walton of the very successful TV series, The Waltons. But behind John Walton is the story of Ralph Waite, the real story of a successful man. Successful as an actor, of course, but even more successful as a man who is a recovering alcoholic. This is Ralph Waite's story. Ralph, the viewers naturally are going to be uh, very interested in how your alcoholism relates to your very successful program, The Waltons. And I detect, as you uh, produce those programs, a, a sensitivity to life and to people that I'm wondering if that might not be a reflection of what you've experienced with your alcoholism. Could you tell oh, us yes. a little about that? Oh, yes. I think that uh, almost, uh, well, in indeed, next month will be eight years ago uh, when I was finally able to, uh, by the grace of God and some help from a lot of friends, uh, stop drinking and begin uh, a life of, so of sobriety and recovery. and. Uh, in those years, uh, my whole life has turned around, and everything that uh, I, I wouldn't be doing the, the Waltons at all if I were still drinking. And certainly, any uh, human values that have come into my acting, my career, or my life uh, have come out of the fact of finally waking up to what life is all about. Something you can't do when you're when you have a problem with with drinking. You're just uh, so worried about where the next drink comes from or how to avoid life that you never live it and uh, I've had a chance to to live it now and also in my work had a chance to uh, put in some of the values and some of the uh, gratitude I feel about about life and it's reflected in many ways without the audience even knowing it in the show uh, and, uh, we've had a chance in the show to do a couple of uh, shows about alcoholism. At one point, I uh, helped uh, get a, a show about Ike Godsey's wife having a problem and uh, John Walton uh, helping her out. But not only in that specific way, the values of the show and my, uh, and my when I sh change lines or when I ask scenes to be changed, it, ha it reflects my, my feelings about life now, which are ones of, uh, of extreme gratitude and, uh, and uh, the importance of uh, of being a, a human being and being a loving human being as much as you can. And I've been helped in that way a great deal by my recovery. Ralph, could we spend a few minutes on what it uh, used to be like? Uh, uh, I, I think many of us, we don't dwell on the past, but we do, of course, reflect on what it used to be like. Well, How, Where did it end up, or, or where were you at when you finally uh, began uh, to get I, recovery? I think I... Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people who have a drinking problem have to go way down yes. before they can uh, uh, hopefully uh, find a way out of it. Uh, of course, a lot of people never find a way out and they die, and this is a dreadful disease that we're talking about. It doesn't look that dreadful because so many people are involved in it. It looks like sort of the natural uh, social patterns. Oh, way of yeah. So you don't really know how much trouble you're in often until it's uh, very, very late. But on the surface, my life was going very well. I, uh, I was a successful actor. Uh, I had a family. Uh, I had, uh, on the, in the external ways, I, it looked good. Uh, but inside, I was really in deep trouble, both spiritually and emotionally. I just felt, uh, I really felt uh, a great deal of despair and hopelessness. Uh, I, I wasn't getting in a lot of trouble out in society, but I was, I knew that I was, I needed to drink in order to, to function, in order to get through the day, and I began, uh, toward the end, I was drinking all, nipping all during the day, and often in a kind of a hidden fashion, I didn't want people to know about it, and I felt dishonest, and I really felt uh, like I was uh, nearing the end, uh, that I just couldn't go on uh, much longer, although as they say, on the surface, I looked good. I think that's one of the most uh, horrendous aspects of this disease is that there are so many people who 
have to maintain this facade and it takes so much energy just to look good and pretend you're feeling good and pretend that life is going good but inside you're dying. you're dying it's such a disease of isolation and loneliness so that i never had to economically or anything like that lose everything as so many of my friends who are now recovering uh, had to but uh, it didn't mean make it any less painful uh, so at the uh, my at the end of my drinking I was indeed, in fact, doing the Waltons at that time. It was I was the Waltons had been three was in existence three months when I re realized that I just couldn't go on. And um, I think, in fact, the Waltons playing that father, that kind, gentle, responsible father, helped me to to realize I just I don't want to I don't want to live like this. I don't want to live like this anymore. And and go and get help, which is another difficult thing for an alcoholic because you're so used to to keeping it to yourself and to not letting people into your life that you don't know how to share and you don't know how to reach out for help and it's the it's the fundamental beginning of any kind of recovery is the ability to ask for help and it's tough but if you're hurting enough you'll ask and you'll get it well, it's described and it's hard for people who haven't experienced it Ralph uh, to to appreciate or, or feel it but at the height of our drinking, the alcoholic lives in a, a constant state of psychic pain. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And to convey that to someone, we, we we're functioning, and usually the alcoholic, as we know, is an extremely capable person. Yes. And they have to work hard, but they are able to produce and to give the appearance of everything's okay, while, as you said, inside they're dying. Yeah, well, the, the energy necessary to keep up that facade of, of health and goodwill and functioning is a, it's a wearing thing. and. Uh, Indeed, uh, uh, so many people I know have uh, succumbed, died early in life through heart attacks. And I know it has very little to do with the heart. It has to do with this man or this woman having to put up such an effort to maintain her life that the heart finally gives out. I, in my own family, I've lost people with heart attacks. It, it is, is alcoholism. Right. It's, not, it's not heart. It's, it's the, the alcoholism it's set a, it up. It is a family thing, and we, of course we... The whole family uh, is affected and experiences uh, pain from it. Uh, what was your family situation, your immediate family? And, uh, who was there at the time that you finally... Well, I had finally isolated myself at, at the very end considerably. I had split from my family and I was pretty much alone, you know. Although, again, uh, it looked good and I saw my kids and, you know, and I, I acted like a father and a husband uh, and a worker and... Uh, but. It was in my childhood. I mean, I have two brothers who are who are recovering. Uh, it, it is a family disease. Uh, I'm convinced more and more. Uh, uncles and aunts and people who have had that have had trouble in this area from so, back in the New York uh, in my New York's uh, early life. Well, that would uh, would equate with our experience. Uh, Sixty some percent of the people who come for treatment come from a situation where there have been other mm. alcoholics in their family. Yes, and not only that, but so many people I know, and I spend a lot of time with recovering alcoholics, not, not because I uh, need to, uh, although I do need to, I like to be around, but uh, those people, as you say, are, are, are so interesting, so sensitive, such, such a recovering, there's nothing like a recovering alcoholic in terms of the ability to have fun and to, and to be a, a, a human being. So I spend a lot of time with, with my brothers and sisters who have this problem. And so many of them never intended to drink at all. They may have had a father or a mother and they went in their childhood. It was such a painful experience that they promised themselves they'd never drink. And lo and behold, they find themselves uh, in deep trouble without even thinking about it years later. So it, is a, it somehow gets into the very fabric of family life and you, you, it's almost impossible to escape it. We're discovering, too, that not only the family member who is uh, the active alcoholic, but the one who is close to them uh, experienced many of those same uh, oh, emotional yes. uh, difficulties that the alcoholic oh, experiences. Yes. I, I, from my experience, I, I mean, you know more about this than I would, but uh, the uh, mate of, of the alcoholic, whether it be a husband or a wife or a girlfriend or wh whoever is very close, often has as deep uh, emotional and spiritual problems as the alcoholic. Because if you're going to spend time with a <laughs> with a drunk, you're going to pay a price. Well, some people say why do they, uh, you know, why sometimes they stick, and of course the reason is, I guess, that they somehow know the potential of that individual yes. that when they get into recovery. Yeah, One of these, there's, a, there's a, another side to it too. Of often people who who stay with the alcoholic who is practicing have some problems themselves that, that they have to face eventually, and. Uh, 
And, uh, you know, you want to ask yourself after a few years, why am I putting up with all this suffering and pain? And uh, one of the good, uh, the necessary painful experiences of an alcoholic is to have his mate finally have enough. I've known a lot of people say, if my wife or my husband would stuck with me one more day or was forgiving one more time, I'd be through. I mean, thank God they finally said enough. You live your life, you have to go, you know, until something, you know, and until you can stop drinking. Which can be the greatest act of love, of simply yes. saying, I, you know, I care for you, but I can't help you, and either you get help or... or you have I'm to not going to go down yeah. with you, no, right. 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 One of the, you touched on what we see as being one of the biggest problems in the, in the, in the field or in the illness, and that's the denial that's built in yes. the alcoholism. We recognize that's partly because of the physical and the psychological dependency, but another part of it is the stigma that unfortunately exists in society, the, the concept <coughs> of who the alcoholic is. And if we could, you know, you, you present some interesting uh, things here. Yeah. Your history at one time, uh, you were a clergyman, mm -hmm. uh, a successful actor, uh, not sure what all the other things, but most people would think, well, you know, a clergyman couldn't be an alcoholic. <laughs> or a doctor couldn't or be. Or a doctor a couldn't right. be. And of course, we know that that's one of the leading professions for it. What do you see, uh, and I know that you're active in trying to help other people who are experiencing this problem, are we making progress of establishing a little better understanding of what the illness is? I don't know. I know that I have been, because I uh, feel so grateful about my own uh, life, uh, I've been willing to do things like today and share my experience and hope that it would be of some, of some help to someone else. If there's anyone sitting out there that's in trouble, and afraid to speak out or afraid to reach out, uh, I just encourage them to do it because uh, their life will begin to have a whole new life. I don't, I'm not as aware as society kind of frowns on or turns their back on a person. Uh, I found the exact opposite, that uh, wherever I go, uh, I've never, and I'm of course in the public eye all the time, never had any negative feedback. People. Even people who, who don't know much about alcoholism uh, sense that uh, there's something honest and direct and uh, even brave, as they say, about a man who is trying to, to live his life without, without drinking. The thing, I, the, the thing I, I find is that the individual often is afraid what's going to happen if people know. What and will they say? What, what will they, they say? Out? And uh, I can't let anybody know. Uh, uh, they might go to a recovery program and uh, somebody might see me there, you know. And it's, uh, it's a part of the disease, it's a part of the denial because uh, it's not true. And it's just another way of avoiding coming to terms with your drinking problem. I'm convinced. Uh, uh, you can have a person, I have friends that everybody knows is in deep trouble. I mean, they just are. Their life is filled with pain. Their ra people around them are being destroyed in little and big ways. And they just can't, it, they don't want to admit it in case somebody might find out. Well, everybody knows, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, they can't and, see it themselves. They can't perhaps, see it themselves. But the people around them can. But the, no, I find nothing from society except encouragement and uh, and acceptance. I have I think that's a good point. All, uh, I think the uh, people want to see people recover. I, the understanding may not yet be as good as we hope. Oh, you can't expect uh, the society in general to understand that this this disease. But they do understand that you were once a troubled and. Uh, indeed destructive person and now you are a benefit yeah. to society and you are a happy person and people see that and they know something's good and something good happened you know you made uh, ralph uh, uh, and i was fortunate enough to, to catch a, an extract of it uh, and hopefully maybe we can get a extract I don't know. Could we possibly get one for the program? Sure, I think we can. We can work that out. Uh, you're talking about the movie, right? Yeah. I, I just, uh, I just think that is so moving and so, tells yeah. such a story. The uh, would you tell just well, a little bit about? Well, I did a film uh, because when you're on a successful television show, you do tend to make a lot of money. <laughs> so, I took some of that money and made a film uh, for theaters, a feature film which is uh, deeply informed about alcoholism. Actually, it takes place on Skid Row in, in Los Angeles. It's called On the Nickel. And uh, it, it expresses my, it's a kind of a way of saying goodbye to that life. And, and, uh, but it, talk, it expresses, it's a story about one man who cannot recover from the disease and one who indeed can and is trying to. It's not only about alcoholism, it's about human beings mm -hmm. and about their, their lives, but, but they, there is a lot of alcohol uh, drinking in it. Uh, I think it's a victory story, and, and 
a life-affirming story. Are you mad at me? No. Because if we start toting up what we owe each other, Sam, we're liable never to figure it out. No, I ain't mad no longer. Only the best thing you ever done for me. I wouldn't be surprised. I just sat there watching you walk away, starting another day. Something inside of me just went click. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And you're right then, I was never going to take another drink. I don't know. We walked away and left each other thousands of times. Wonder what was so special about that morning. When I first saw you stand in the shadows back there at Rose's Park, you know what I thought? What? I thought the pillow man was coming to get me. Ah, I never believed all that bunk about the pillow man. Oh, he's around, Sam. I don't know where, but I got a feeling he's around. Camping out in them alleys. Hey, hold it, hold it. That's that's ten dollars. Give me ten dollars. Give me ten dollars. I know for a long time I had to come back down here. I've been putting it off. about you a lot lately, Sam. I miss you and all that. But I've been pulling for you in my way. Hoping you were going to make it. Are you going to make it? Sure, that ain't hard. Should I hardly want another drink at all since I left? It's just that... Now, you can get the wine out of your system, but damn, it's hard to get the life out of your system, you know. It's boring out there, see, gee, it's just plain boring. Scary as one of these. You know, you try to get into what everybody's doing, but... Damn, when you come right down to it, it's hard to knock yourself out for what, getting a new car or making a lot of money or trying to be somebody. You know? It's like you gotta pretend, you know? You gotta pretend all that important. Like it's a game everybody's into. And the stone cold truth is the games down here is more fun. You know, if the wine didn't make me so sick and the damn cops would go away, I'd just as soon stick with you, C.G. It's your choice, Sam. Swagman and jumped into the billabong. Uh, He'll never take me alive, cried he, and his ghost may be heard as you walk along the billabong. He'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. A waltzing Matilda, waltzing Matilda.
I found on Skid Row that it's it, only in the exter in externals is it different from any other area of our lives. And there's people down there who are struggling for dignity and for life, um, as there are everywhere in our society. And uh, I, I found it a very interesting place to talk about the human condition. I hope that it gets uh, wide acceptance. It deserves it. Right. I think uh, in the little time we have left that I'd like to, uh, and you, you already touched on it, so many people think, well, you know, if I do give up drinking, what's my life going to be like? Uh, what will I do with my time? Uh, what will people think of me? Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a different way of life. Yes. Alcoholism became a way of yes. life. Yes. You don't. You're not aware. You're not aware of that. You think you're just living a normal, natural life, and uh, all of it. When you, when you finally, just that pure act of not drinking, makes such a difference. It's a, you know, before you do, you think, oh, well, I drinking. It's no big deal. I, you know, I have a few drinks at night or whatever. Uh, and I used to, when I first th began to not to drink, to, to get sober. Uh, a lot of my friends never realized I was in trouble with it, incidentally. Did but they say, well, you didn't really have No, they said, what you, what's the big deal? What <laughs> yeah. do you mean you're not drinking? They didn't Come see on, the I inside. Was, no, <laughs> they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't go to bed with me and wake up with me and yeah. uh, go through those days. And I thought at first, what am I going to do? I mean, what do you do if you don't have a drink? How do you go to a party or how do you have a lunch or how do you... What do you what does one do if one, and I spend a lot of times in bars, I like bars, you know, in New York or in Los Angeles, I like that atmosphere. Well, I thought I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have any time, I mean, I, I have so much time on my hands, I go crazy. Well, I haven't had a, you know, of course, you don't have a minute on your time, and once you start living, there's so much to do that you, uh, that you, you I, I wonder what I was thinking in those days, but I did indeed, I was seriously wonder. And I, without being aware of it, my life had been so infiltrated with having a drink uh, that I find it, found it difficult to, to go out or to go to dinner parties or to go to social events because I didn't know how to quite how to behave. I had spent so many years kind of being softened, you know, with a little nip and kind of getting through social situations because I had this little buzz on that, uh, that I, I felt very vulnerable and naked uh, without it. And I was amazed at how deeply it had, in, it had permeated my life once I got sober. I wasn't aware of it before. I think that's the secret that uh, the, uh, you know, as we progress into it, becomes our way of life. Oh, yes. Now, if you if you just quit drinking and don't replace it somehow, you can't have a vacuum. I don't think there's any way to just quit if you have this disease. I think you have to get a, a, a way of a, life. A way of life. And I, I know I can tell by the, your willingness to help people. Your uh, your sensitiveness and so on that you have developed a style a manner of living that gives you, I don't want to put words in your mouth but I sense an inner peace well uh, it, uh, sometimes sometimes yeah a lot more than before <laughs> it's a struggle I mean uh, you, you 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 go through 25 years of, of heavy drinking and you there's a you're a damaged human being it doesn't mean you can't have a wonderful life and i do have one now but that that does not mean it's not a daily struggle it's not a problem free life and no and it's a daily struggle to maintain a good attitude and to and to and to enjoy your life mm -hmm. uh negativity and destructiveness and uh and the bad attitudes uh, are as much a part of this disease as anything else and my attitude to keep my attitude straight in order to enjoy this life uh is a daily is a daily job one must work out on a daily basis but it's more than worth it i'll tell you we try to point out that uh, you know you if when you quit drinking at that moment you don't have an alcohol problem but you still have a living problem exactly. and if you handle your living problem you will not have an alcohol problem exactly. if you don't handle it you're back at it exactly it's a matter of a uh, style of living uh, a willingness to help others to get out of ourselves and uh, it's you've a done of so much of that. Yeah. But, uh, and we are so appreciative that as busy as you are, I know today uh, that you'll sit down and, and talk like this and g give of yourself. Because people out there, uh, we know, Ralph, that there's going to be someone there who thinks that uh, I'm the only one that has this problem or what will people think of me or what can I do. And the point we want them to know is that like you, like me, like so many other people, you can recover, and with you, the family can. And even if there's family people out there where the individual isn't yet able or willing to do something, they can get help. Yes. Are but you if, there is, if there is such a person out there, I, I think it's important to say that uh, 
don't do it for your family. Don't do it for your wife or kids. If you if if somebody's in trouble, come on in with the rest of us and find a program of recovery because it's a great way of life. And uh, maybe we'll meet one of these days. And it's great to be alive. Yeah. Thank you very right. much, and I really appreciate it. I know many people out there well, will. It's, it's my Good pleasure, believe you. me. Okay. All right. How much of a step is it from probable failure to potential success? For Ralph Waite, that step was deciding that drinking was not for him. For the thousands of alcoholics and family members who have found their way to recovery at River Park, there are success stories as bright in their way as that of Ralph Waite. There are the successes of returning to families, to jobs, and to businesses. The success of regaining a life worth living. As Ralph Waite told his story, he used these words, despair, trouble, dishonesty, isolation, loneliness, hurt, pain. The same words so many alcoholics use to describe their lives before they enter treatment at River Park. But as to his life today, Ralph Waite used these words, grateful, acceptance, encouragement, ability, interesting, full, victory, peace. The negative of before, the positive of today and tomorrow. As a result of these It's Great to Be Alive programs, many hundreds of people, alcoholics and their families, have called and written to River Park. Hundreds of alcoholics have cried out to us for love and help. At River Park, we understand alcoholism. At River Park, we do provide love and help and hope. friends.